Welcome to Scardia.com. In this video, we are going to learn about intestinal protozoa in detail. Protozoa are a very diverse group of single-celled organisms with more than 50,000 species. These are the organisms that are known for their diversity, and they are developed under different conditions. Let's start by looking at three important organisms found within the intestinal tract. These three organisms are important and thus considered as intestinal protozoa. The amoeba, intamoeba histolytica, the flagellate, gyadia lambia, and the sporozone, cryptosporidium hominis. Before moving ahead, let's recall the disease caused by each organism. Starting with intamoeba histolytica, which causes amoebiasis. Gyadia lambia causes a disease called giardiasis. The last one in the list of intestinal protozoa is the Cryptosporidium hominis, which causes a disease called cryptosporidiosis. We will discuss these intestinal protozoa in detail. Let's start with Intamoeba histolytica. The diseases caused by Intamoeba histolytica are ambic dysentery and liver abscess. There are many important characteristic properties of Intamoeba histolytica. The life cycle of Intamoeba histolytica has two stages. The first one is the motile amoeba stage, also known as trophozoites. And the second one is the non-motile cyst. The trophozoites are found within the intestinal and extraintestinal lesions and in diarrheal stools. The cyst predominates in non-diarrheal stools. These cysts are not highly resistant and are readily killed by boiling, but not by chlorination of water supplies. They can be removed by filtration of water. The cyst has four nuclei, an important diagnostic criterion. Upon exostation in the intestinal tract, an amoeba with four nuclei emerges and then divides to form eight trophozoites. The mature trophozoit has a single nucleus with an even lining of peripheral chromatin and a prominent central nucleolus. Antibodies are formed against trophozoite antigens in invasive amoebiases but they are not protective, which means that the previous infection does not prevent reinfection. The antibodies are useful for serologic diagnosis, transmission, and epidemiology. The organism is acquired by ingestion of cysts that are transmitted primarily by the fecal oral route in contaminated food and water. There is no animal reservoir. The spread or epidemiology of Intamoeba histolytica shows that infection by E. histolytica is found worldwide but occurs most frequently in tropical countries, especially in areas with poor sanitation. About 1% to 2% of people in developed countries are affected. Now we will go through the pathogenesis or the steps by which a disease develops. The ingested cysts differentiate into trophozoites in the ileum but tend to colonize the cecum and colon. The trophozoites then invades the colonic epithelium and secrete enzymes that cause localized necrosis. Little information occurs at the site. As the lesion reaches the muscularis layer, a typical flask-shaped also forms that can undermine and destroy large areas of the intestinal epithelium. Progression into the submucosa leads to invasion of the portal circulation by the trophozoites. By far the most frequent site of systemic disease is the liver where abscesses containing trophozoites form. Let us dive deep into the clinical findings of disease caused by Intamoeba histolytica. Acute intestinal amoebiasis presents as dysentery accompanied by lower abdominal discomfort, flatulence, and tenesmus. Chronic amoebiasis with low-grade symptoms such as occasional diarrhea, weight loss, and fatigue also occurs. Roughly 90% of those infected have asymptomatic infections, but they may be carriers. Other clinical features are ambic abscess of the liver, which is characterized by right upper quadrant pain, weight loss, fever, and a tender, enlarged liver. Right lobe abscesses can penetrate the diaphragm and cause lung disease. Most cases of ambic liver abscess occur in patients who have not had overt intestinal amoebiasis. Aspiration of the liver abscess yields brownish-yellow pus with the appearance and consistency of anchovy paste, 
It is very important to know the basic steps involved in life cycle of any microorganism. The life cycle of Entamoeba histolytica consists of two steps. In the first step, cyst and trophozoites are passed in the stool and are entering the environment. In the second step, the mature cysts are being ingested. Then, the cyst produces trophozoites that cause ambic dysentery in the colon and spread to the liver, lungs, and brain. To diagnose a disease caused by bacterial species, the following are the laboratory diagnostic procedure we should be aware of. Diagnosis of intestinal amoebiasis rests on finding either trophozoite in diarrheal stools or cysts in form stools. Diarrheal stools should be examined within one hour of collection to see the amoeboid motility of the trophozoite. Trophozoites characteristically contain ingested red blood cells. The most common error that occurs during diagnosis is to mistake fecal leukocytes for trophozoites. Because cysts are passed intermittently, at least three specimens should be examined. About half of the patients with extraintestinal amoebiasis have negative stool examinations. E. histolytica can be distinguished from other amoebas by two major criteria. The first is the nature of the nucleus of the trophozoite. The E. histolytica nucleus has a small central nucleolus and fine chromatin granules along the border of the nuclear membrane. The nuclei of other amoebas are quite different. The second is cyst size and number of its nuclei. Mature cysts of E. histolytica are smaller than those of Entamoeba coli and contain four nuclei, whereas E. coli cysts have eight nuclei. The trophozoites of Entamoeba dispar, a non-pathogenic species of Entamoeba, are morphologically indistinguishable from those of E. histolytica. Therefore, a person who has trophozoites in the stool is only treated if symptoms warrant it. Two tests are highly specific for E. histolytica in the stool. One detects E. histolytica antigen, and the other detects nucleic acids of the organism in a polymerase chain reaction based assay. A complete examination for cysts includes a wet mount in saline, an iodine stained wet mount, and a fixed trichrome stain preparation, each of which brings out different aspects of cyst morphology. Serologic testing is useful for the diagnosis of invasive anebiases. The indirect hemagglutination test is usually positive in patients with invasive diseases. Moving on to the treatment of diseases caused by E. histolytica. The treatment of choice for symptomatic intestinal amoebiasis or hepatic abscesses is metronidazole or tenidazole. Hepatic abscesses need not be drained. Asymptomatic cyst carriers should be treated with iodoquinol or paramomycin. Prevention involves avoiding fecal contamination of food and water and observing good personal hygiene such as handwashing. Purification of municipal water supplies is usually effective, but outbreaks of amoebiasis in city dwellers still occur when contamination is heavy. The use of mite soil, that is human feces, for fertilization of crops should be prohibited. In areas of endemic infection, vegetables should be cooked. So this was all about the Intamoeba histolytica, its characteristics, laboratory investigations, and treatment and prevention.